Hello, hello. Happy 14th segment and welcome to our bi-monthly What About Your Story Saturdays brought to you by Lion at Heart Freedom Journey, a movement inspired by my book, Lion at Heart, Discovering Courage and Greatness Within. This is Kai Hayes once again presenting to you topics on leadership, personal and spiritual growth. Our mission, be the voice for the voiceless. We bring you our second and fourth Saturday live shows at 6 p.m. Central Time each month to simply inspire individuals to share their stories and tell themselves invisible no more. For when we help give voice to the voiceless, together we will achieve our vision to potentially develop individuals' true leadership, personal and spiritual growth through their own life's experiences. In line at heart, we teach people to lead with their hearts, for we believe that our hearts never lie. So if you wish to download a free digital copy of the first chapter of the book, please visit kaihaze.com. That's right, kaihaze.com. And if you enjoy the first chapter, then please go ahead, get yourself a copy on the same website, kaihaze.com or go to amazon.com. And I promise you this book, is going to transform you and make you appreciate life better in spite of all the obstacles we face in life. And by the way, we shall be giving away five free books at the end of the show. So stick around right now. Please drop on comment section below what state you're from. If you're joining this line at heart call right now, what state you're from? We'd like to know. I, I believe this is also international, right? Well, today's show is all about... Um, is all hands on deck. So we welcome viewers participation. And today I will answer a few questions and we'll also ask questions to some of our lionesses who are here with us on topic on chapter two, victories over sacrifices. So right now, I believe, you know, my lioness and Kubarubia from Ohio have something, have a question for me based on the book that she read on chapter two. Anne, are you there? You can unmute yourself. Oh, no, no, no. I think Anne is not here right now. So let's move on to uh, Beth Busa from New Jersey. Beth? Hi, Guy. Um, can you hear Hi. me well? Hey. <laughs> yes, Welcome. Uh, yes, again, I'm honored to be here, Guy. So um, let me quote you, Guy. Um, you said in the chapter two that um, Lioness has a way of make uh, loneliness, I should say. Loneliness has a way of making us learn how to trust and believe in ourselves and depend on our inner strength and courage until our heart becomes stronger. Oh my God, guy. So this is actually the most difficult thing for all of us to do, to believe in ourselves. We are always living in fear, right? And uh, fear of failure, fear of of change and judgment. Um, how were you able to have that mindset, Kai, that you can depend on yourself, that you have what it takes and um, that you can do it? How did you pass that fear? Wow, thank you for that question, Beth. I think that's very interesting that you asked that. And uh, so coming from my heart, I mean, braving the unknown is um, definitely the hardest thing to do, Beth. Um, especially, whew, I'm becoming emotional. When you are alone facing life, there was no guarantee whether I will achieve success during that time or I will fail. But I literally felt like I was walking in the dark carrying my son, my parents and grandparents. And I couldn't see the road ahead of me. I had no clue, Beth. But loneliness can drive a person to real panic, just like I did. And for others, even to insanity or suicide. But in spite of this terrible, this te terrible feeling that I have, I still, you know, I, I still believe that this is a gift from God. Because Beth, loneliness allowed me to develop, develop that inner strength and trust in myself through that journey of hardships. You know, I turned that experiences into something positive because I realized if being alone will not make me feel lonely, 
will I ever be as compassionate as I am now reaching to others and sharing my love to all of you. Loneliness urges us to find you, to find us and reach out and together form a we. That's why you guys are part of my life right now, my lionesses. You know, loneliness disappears as soon as we experience the we-ness with others. I hope that answers your question, Beth. Thank you. Yes, I thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, I believe we're, we'll, we're going to give this uh, floor to um, Emmy. Emmy, are you there? I have a question for you. Yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Emmy's from Texas as well. Emmy, um, I know you have been reading my book over and over. And so um, what yes. basically yeah. touched you? From, from most of chapter two, you know, victories over sacrifices. And did you experience transformation in your life after reading the book? Can you share that with us? Yes, oh wow, what a great question. Um, my dearest friend and uh, mentor, Linus Kai, thank you, I'm so humbled. Um, yes, um, after reading your book over and over, even the preview, I'm really inspired and I'm really empowered. And especially now we're in chapter two, that is our focus for today's segment. Um, you know, all those um, that you had mentioned and your struggles and your pain, I can relate. I, I was there too before my victories. And um, what touches me most is the sacrifices before success before victory and uh, you know i have to embrace all the sacrifices and trials and i whatever it takes to reach your victory and in fact um i just want to share a little bit of something that uh, a victory that is happening on my life in this pandemic um since the pandemic i was i have to step up in my department where I work, um, I am currently um, a medical technologist specializing in microbiology. It's really under time right now. It's, um, it's just the right time. And also building my health and biohacking entrepreneurship business. I have to step up to run a department because my director, her age is at risk. She has to stay home and work from home. So I have to manage our department in the hospital. We are in South Texas in a small hospital and we are one of the hotspots actually. We were in CNN, we were in Fox News because of the pandemic uh, crisis that we have. And it's a struggle to me leading a department, running the whole department every day, um, training a lot of new uh, employees coming from the states from different, different states. It was a struggle and a challenge every day, but you know what? My, my faith in God deeper, and I was able to handle the situation difficult as it is. I was able to handle it with calm. I was able to face all the, the challenges that they expect from me. I mean, stepping up as a department director right now, I'm in head, in charge. It's a lot to me, but I have to respond to the calling, but there's nobody that can do it except me right now. So you know what? I realized because I was involved and be part of this movement, Kai, I really want to thank you because I am totally a changed person. I became braver. I became more positive in my life. And I'm not afraid of anything. I am <laughs> so grateful for you. Thank you for mm -hmm. leading and sharing your life and leading this movement to the whole world and to touch all of us, our members here. Wow, that's so an incredible testimony, Emmy, because that is what our mission is all about, to discover greatness and courage, which you didn't have before, because before we, before actually you read the book, before that, we had a heart-to-heart -heart talk, and you were depressed. You were kind of like feeling really, really like um, alone and depressed, and, and as soon as you read the book, you were like, Kai, you know, I, I'm not alone anymore, and things like that, and now you yes. see that you have empowered yourself through that book. So guys, I'm telling you, this book is about leadership, personal, and a spiritual book. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Wonderful, Emmy. And you are a part of this great group. So thank you for being such a great, great, um, <laughs> vital part of our um, momentum phase. Oh, you're welcome. I love you, my friend. Thank you so much. I love much. you back. 
Now, um, let's bring in Cara, Cara Pitron um, from uh, Minnesota. I think she has a question for me earlier. Hi, Kai. Hi, Hi. everybody. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you today, Kai, because in your second chapter, Victories Over Sacrifices, um, you speak of the importance of making sacrifices along our freedom journeys. I know you've made so many sacrifices in your life, but I was wondering if you could think of the biggest sacrifice that you've had to make thus far and tell us a little bit about it. Thank you. That's a great question. Ooh, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to pick because I've had a lot of sacrifices along the way uh, since my journey from, from the get-go from when I was 25 years old, but I will mention a few. Uh, I must confess, Cara, that uh, often in the past, I, I daydream. I love daydreaming. I daydream of having a great lifestyle, you know, having married to a wealthy man because it's free to dream, right? <laughs> And, and that I didn't have to work. What it, would it feel like if I if I have everything that I didn't have to go to work? And I dreamed of that. They dream. They dream all of that all the time. And uh, I even asked God if I would ever live that kind of life. You know, because I must confess, I, as a human being, you know, I I was tired. I was tired during that time. Asking when. Well, this poverty ends and I, I get burned out, you know, Cara, I always, you know, waking up with so much anxieties, you know, afraid I might fall, afraid I might be just living paycheck to paycheck all the days of my life, you know, and, whew, but I wanted to have good things in life. I wanted to experience how successful life feels, but I was too prideful. I will not marry for convenience. You know, I believe in preserving dignity and integrity. And the biggest sacrifice was, one of the biggest sacrifices was the constant grinding for years. And, and I know a lot of you feels that way too, you know, but hush, you know, um, you know, like working long hours, you know, waking up early to catch a public bus, no air con, <laughs> sitting beside some smelly and filthy man, <laughs> get soaked in the rain, up to my knees during flood seasons, you know, arriving home late and hungry, stuck in a traffic for eight hours. I mean, thank God I wasn't sickly, um, but it was lonely and scary as a single mom of five dependents, you know, not being able to choose what career you want, you know, which by the way, fashion is my love, but I had to give that up, you know, I had to sacrifice that because even if I'm, enjoying the TV commercial ads. I was a commercial model. I was look, good looking when I was younger. And, uh, you know, but, but I had to leave that because I have to be money driven. I have to make more money than having that <laughs> TV and print ads. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, but uh, I have to make a choice. It was about choices, you know, in life, because uh, if not, um, if I would break down, um, I couldn't afford to see my dependents suffer. Uh, maybe I, I can suffer, but what about my five dependents? It's, it's difficult. So I hope that that answers your question, Karen. Oh, yes, Kai, thank you. And you are very beautiful on the outside, but you're <laughs> very beautiful on the inside and very strong and an inspiration to all of us. So thank you. Thank you. And likewise. You are such a great addition to our family and you actually blew our minds last uh, two weeks ago, two Saturdays ago. Uh, you were incredible. And it was, it's yeah. just the beginning, right? It's just the beginning of our wonderful journey together. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully COVID will, <laughs> will be over soon. <laughs> yes. yes, amen to okay. that. Thank you. So I've got a question here for Paulette. Paulette Schnipke, yeah, from Ohio. Are you there? I am here. Hi, how are you? I'm good. My beautiful lioness. Uh, may I ask a question about um, what was your favorite quote or sentence in that chapter two, Victories Over Sacrifices? And tell me, was, was prayer a huge part of your victory, especially when you face uh, various obstacles along the way? Because I know you and I have been exchanging thoughts about our you know, obstacles that we have uh, encountered during our journey, <laughs> life's journey. Well, I think that my favorite quote from chapter two 
is the best thing is to inspire other people with your own positive behaviors. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love that. Because I believe that when you have the positive behaviors, that's how you pro practically uh, overcome your obstacles in life, right? That's right. That's right. And um, yes, prayer has always been a big part of my life since I was a little girl. <laughs> and um, you know me. <laughs> We're crybabies. I am such a crybaby. I'm so sorry. Because you have a pure, you know what? You have the purest of the purest heart, but actually you have a strong, in, you're, you're strong in spirit. And, and as far as I'm concerned, all of us here on earth must pursue to have the purest heart and become strong in, in our spirit. You always know the right thing to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I have felt, um, I've been blessed because my family was a family of prayer and even extended family. So it was just a part of who I was growing up. And um, that I, I feel like whether it was some major family medical issues or some business issues or just some life issues that I've never been alone. So I have always felt that my prayers have been answered in some way. And I've also always felt the power of other people's prayers. Absolutely. I, I feel you and, and I can relate to you because um, the prayers of, of good people that surrounds us makes a real good impact in our lives. And, and <laughs> believe it or not, it, you can see, you can see the magnificent transformation. You can see the blessings outpouring in our lives when our friends who are prayerful um, are really uh, fervently, you know, uh, together, yes. united, praying for our obstacles, to win our obstacles. And that is exactly what we did, what you did for Greg and what we did for, <laughs> for Richard. And uh, now we are together, bonded forever. You are beautiful inside and out. Thank you, Paulette, for sharing your heart today. And uh, I will be moving on to uh, Betty. Are you there, Betty? Uh, Picard from Texas. Take it away, Betty. Well, I have to share with y'all, I am not a huge reader. But when I started your book, I couldn't seem to put it down. So in chapter two, you talk about family and husband and your son. And so, you know, when you did those and a good company to be with, being with a good family and wanting to support them, wanting to make them have a better life and meeting Greg. And don't you think that gave you more strength and guidance to move on? I mean, don't you think that's what really, that good combination of all helped uh, to get you where you're at today? That's a wonderful, wonderful thought, Betty. And I, and I know that you uh, give importance to family, to friends, and, um, you know, basically you are, you have a good family, you're surrounded yourself with good friends. And um, that's the reason why this probably had an impact with you. Yes, definitely. Uh, but I would say, I would be honest, Betty. Yes, in my case, yes, it definitely made an impact to my success because if I didn't have a loving a family, you know, good friends um, and, and companies that actually allowed me to flourish in life, I would not be successful. So the answer would be, to that, Betty, would be, uh, in all honesty, to some, yes, but not necessarily happens to all. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, Betty, even with good families, um, good friends, you know, plus working company, success still requires dedication, uh, commitment, massive sacrifice. Um, you must be willing to do extraordinary things to excel in life. You know, friends and families can help inspire in that sector, in that arena. They can help inspire and gives us hope, uh, support, you know, to have and to hold. But uh, we are the ones doing the action and we are the ones who will decide if we want to achieve success or not. So it's still a matter of choice and, uh, you know, willing to, to really sacrifice. 
that does answer your question? Absolutely, yes. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for being a part of this great movement. You are such an asset to us. Love you, girl. Love you too. And moving on, moving on, uh, calling Sylvia Morales. Are you there, Sylvia? Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, hi, hi. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the hot seat. This is like like interrogation. Uh, well, Sylvia, I'm, I'm glad that you have uh, finished reading my book, Lying at Heart. And uh, I, <laughs> you and I have uh, shared a lot of uh, great moments together. In fact, you know, we laugh together, we cry together, anything. <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure that you fought a lot of detractors before achieving some of your victories in life. Uh, would you share or would you care to share with us some tips on how you overcame it? Oh, wow. OK, detractors. Uh, that's someone who is always critical and they usually criticize you with something or, or someone unfairly. And I'm sure a lot of people have gone through that. And throughout my career, it has been quite a bit. Um, it, 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 I would have to say that people tend to put you down at times. Um, people will will find fault with whatever you say or anything that you do. And you have to find that strength to prove to them they're wrong. We, we all have something good. And it started from childhood. And I had an experience with my childhood where um, I'm the eldest of seven children. And I was the first generation born in the US. And my parents are from Puerto Rico. And of course they couldn't speak English. They weren't very educated and they did the best they could to take care of us. And um, we lived in a Polish Slovak neighborhood and um, it was nice for a little while. And then all of a sudden you'll start getting some really bad neighbors. And um, of course in my childhood, we had neighbors who would be very nasty and they would tell my parents to go back to where they came from just because they couldn't speak English very well. And because we came from a poor environment. And of course that used to get me really angry and I always would defend them. And my parents would tell me, calm down, don't use words, don't treat them badly, pray for them. They don't know what they do. In order words, what you hear from the Bible constantly, you know? And the one thing my mom used to always say to me, treat others as you want them to treat you. And that was tough with this little spitfire of me to try to calm down when I was younger. But um, I had to learn, but I had to do it in a quiet way if I wanted to get things done. Then in school, in high school, in dating, I had that same issue. They were embarrassed to come to my house because of my heritage. Um, in corporate America, I, had, I went through that, but not just with heritage because we had a lot of variety of background and heritage, but it's being a female in an all-male environment. And um, moving up to the corporate ladder, the, the more you move up to the ladder, the tougher it got. You know, you get all these jealousies, people backstabbing you, trying to get your job or get above you. And it, it doesn't matter how well you do, it makes them even more jealous and they want to hurt you. And I had to learn to keep the front and calm down and, and, and gather my female friends. Help me. What should I say? What should I do in a positive manner? I do not want to be negative. And so I always surrounded myself with positive women and they helped me through it and it made me look good <laughs> because they looked bad when I ended up presented it in a nice positive way and got the point across. And that's, that's, that's a skill you gotta learn, but it helps when you have positive friends to surround yourself with. And also look for mentors. I didn't have any mentors. I looked up to some female business um, um, colleagues and I wish I would have had a mentor sooner, but it's better late than never. So I chose a mentor now because with my business, I chose Kai. And let me tell you, she has a, 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 almost similar type backgrounds and, and, and the things that she went through in corporate America and the things that we had to do the fight and we always had to keep a smile on our face and it's very, very difficult. I had to look for her for, as a mentor but then when I lost everything in the past, when I lost um, everything in 2008, I had to try to do what I could to bring my self-esteem back up. And I was alone. I was living in a city because I totally moved and relocated for this job, lived in a city with no spouse, no family or friends to rely on. And that was the hardest when you lose everything. 
and you're scared and you're literally going to be in the streets. And that's when I said, what am I going to do? And I prayed and prayed, God, lead me the way. And I started reading personal development books like crazy. I started listening to motivational speakers, you know, like um, Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins and Les Brown and Simon Sinek, you name it. Everybody and anybody was talking positive, trying to get my self-esteem back up and to build my personal development. And listening to meditation music, um, hypno self-hypnosis, um, anything that would be positive. And when I finally moved to Austin, I started meeting positive people. My business was here. My family needed me here. And I go, now I know why God brought me here and why I had to go through what I went through to make me stronger, to be able to help out the people out here. And I still am working on myself and I still need my friends. And I have all of you guys there. And I'm really, really happy that you guys are here because sometimes you have struggles even with your own family. And when they're not there for you and you don't have a mate to support on, all I can do is support, heck, get support and positive feedback from my friends or like-minded people. And I'm telling you, you need to be in a community like this. You need to read Kai's book because that book, I'm telling you, it tells you all the things you need to help you to start growing. And then don't stop. Just keep going. Keep going. Because like I said, you have to do self-care. You got to take care of yourself here. No one can do it all for you, to, for you. You have to do it yourself. Find a mentor like Kai. Read personal books and, and meditate and pray. And let me tell you, all those things have helped me. I'm still struggling, but I've come a long ways. I've come a long ways. And I'm pushing it and I'm going to make it. I'm going to make Wonderful. it. Wonderful. My goodness. I believe that Sylvia just summarized the book line at heart for you guys. So get a copy for yourself. You are beautiful inside and night uh, out. And uh, Sylvia, we've got a true line at heart here. Thank you for sharing your heart to us. My goodness, the, the obstacles that you have uh, experienced in life. And here you are strong, <laughs> stronger than ever. Well, thank you so much. That was beautiful, beautiful. I hope you guys are listening to this. This is so great. Now on to Gigi Donahoe. You have a question for me from Florida. Hi, Kai. Take very, very, very honored to be part of this group. I got to say that to everybody. Yeah, yeah. These are a group of very, very strong women, men. Um, I have to Dito, Be Betty. I am not a reader as well. However, with my job right now, I do have to go through multiple patient charts. Um, one of the things that grabbed me on chapter two is when you said you represent every every organization, every corporation that you work for. But down that paragraph, you said, I, I always make my customers loyal to me. How do you do that? <laughs> That's, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful question. Um, yes, my, my colleague actually would tell me, they come to my, to my table and say, Kai, how do you disarm your customers? I said, what do you mean by disarm? Well, you just disarm them. Like, like when you tell them something to do, they're just going to do it. You know, <laughs> that's funny. But uh, to answer your question, um, I develop good relationship from top to bottom in every corporate accounts um, I handled in the past. From top executives, meaning who are the decision makers, including personal assistants, receptionists, janitors. And so when I walk in the office, <laughs> they give me their big smiles and I would stop by a few minutes to chat with them and get to know them and just spend, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of little few seconds or a few minutes to just ask them about personal things and get to know them. And then I became popular <laughs> and will be one of the top favorite vendors. So uh, I think that that's what they meant by disarming my customers or my clients, my accounts. And I extend outstanding customer service as well. Where there's a problem, I personally come and show up myself. And uh, if not escalate issues, if need be ASAP, I would try to solve the uh, issues or concerns of my accounts or my customers 
uh, within 24 hours as much as possible. If it's beyond if it's beyond my control, then you know I would still um, see the possibilities of how to appease them. You know, and they they will get mad at me. You know, they will not, and I would not take that personally because I know that they are mad because of the service, because of the technical issues and all that. But I would pacify them, and they would ease up, and then they will still remain loyal to me. And in fact, um, I become good friends with them. So each time, whenever I change my my job, because I normally change my job because I'm money driven. Huh? Whoever pays me well, I will go. <laughs> and uh, you know what? They would welcome me. Hey, what's 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 in it for us right now, Miss Miss? Uh, uh, I was Kai Earnhardt before, Miss Earnhardt. Um, so they will they will change their their vendors whatever I'm <laughs> representing that's that's really that's really such a I think a gift a gift and favors from God as well I hope that answers your question with Gigi definitely definitely and and you actually explained it thoroughly and that's that's actually the reason why you're successful Thank and you. that's exactly that was the it's not just your being so Persevere, the perseverance that you had and the passion that you have to be successful, it's also, it also came to the being down to earth, talking to janitors, talking to people that are, yes. may not look important yeah. in that company, but yeah. you actually had that, you actually charm people. And that's the reason why they became loyal to you. Right. And yeah. the reason being, G, is that um, I value people. I've been there, underdog, from the bottom. Right. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I have a different mindset uh, mm -hmm. amongst other successful people, because me, I came from there, I came from the bottom. So I know how to humble myself and people for me, all people, they're valuable to me, whether mm -hmm. you're a janitor, whether you're, you're just merely like a clerk, I look up to them as a human being. Because you know what, I've been there and I didn't like being, you know, put down, right? So right. that's a lesson, lessons learned. Right. Absolutely. Excellent. I love your question. It opened okay. up a new whole <laughs> thing of uh, lessons learning here for being, yes. uh, you know, uh, addressing huma um, humility, humility, exactly. leadership yes. is humility, right? Serving yes. others. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, on to Kay. Kay. <laughs> Kay Castro, take it away. I think uh, I have a question for you. Are you there? <laughs> Yes, I am. Thank you. I turned the air conditioner off so I could hear you. So I will speak briefly. Yes. I think that my question for you is I want you to uh, identify one of your victories in your life journey. Was there ever a time that you felt defeated? Of course, that's human being, right? Uh, like you can't no longer handle and continue to sacrifice anymore that you wanted to quit. But, uh, you know, but uh, it didn't because you to basically achieve victory. Would you share those thoughts with us? I will, and uh, thank you so much for that question. I am honored to be with all of you right now. I have got, I'm getting to know many of you more personally, and I really am honored about the strength and courage and all of the victories and all of the troubles and all, everything that people are overcoming. And it's really humbling and, and, and quite emotional. So thank you. Thank you all for that. Um, I, I struggle most with victories with my own little self. <laughs> um, and I'm going to come clean right now. I was responsible for a task for this group. And I, um, I failed. Something went out that shouldn't have gone out. And I should have caught it and I didn't. And my little vic my victory right now is owning up with all of you. Uh, accepting the consequences, whatever they may be, accountability, and my uh, thrive, my, my desire to do better next time. I could curl up in a little ball right now and say, oh, I messed up. Kai's never going to talk to me again. Emmy hates me. <laughs> and um, Kara, Kara thinks that I'm an absolute idiot. And oh, my. right? I could do that. I choose to give myself grace that I would give myself grace, apologize, and make it, um, and, and, and do my best to be accountable and make it right. That's not a victory of world peace, world hunger, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's a tiny little piece of victory in my life 
because I got to start somewhere. I really do. And I do apologize to all of you and I will do better. And, and sometimes these victories, you don't know what they are when you're going through them. Um, I always play tennis with someone better than I am because I want to learn how to be better. In his mind, it's a victory because he wins every single time. <laughs> In my head, it's a victory because I've learned something every time. It's not reflected on the scorecard. It's not reflected in anything but the sweat of my brow. It's a victory to me that I am learning and growing. So sometimes some of these victories, you don't know it at the time. And you're like, it's a struggle and it's painful and I'm gonna go curl up in a ball and cry. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm supposed to do this, walk through it, learn from it. And maybe it is part of that whole victory and we don't even know it. So I, I guess I just have to keep doing it. I just have to keep doing it. So that's, that's what I'd like to share today. Thank you, Kai, for the opportunity to be here and, and, and be the servant leader. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> there are sacrifices. There are. It is. You have to have sacrifices. And I was always a, uh, I was always a carrot person, not a stick. <laughs> Uh, but now I'm realizing how important these lessons are, and I, I'm paying more attention now. And your book has given me the grace to, to experience it and to be open and, and open-minded and learn. So thank you. Wonderful. Beautifully said. Uh, the thing that attracted me the most about what you just said is that uh, you're willing to correct the errors of the past, you know, and learning is much more important to you than winning. What a profound way to, to attain victory because it's all about learning, you guys. It's not all about winning. What's winning if you're not learning? What's winning if you're not putting it to heart and you know, sharing that, that uh, victory with others, right? It will only be a complete victory when you learn and then you are willing to share with others so that others may attain victory as well. Leadership is all about servant leadership you know great leadership is all about servant leadership leadership when you want to be a leader you better be careful because um, a good leader serves it's not about being served right it's about serving wonderful very profound Kay thank you so much and stick around my lovely lioness uh how about Ann Kubarubia from Ohio are you there Ann or you're still out there driving <laughs> If you're still driving, then uh, we're gonna move on to. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, hi. Yeah, Hello. hi. Um, first of all, Kai, I would like to uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to join your crusade and to be with this amazing women that are in this call right now. Um, you, you are just really such an inspiration to many. Uh, now, my question to you, um, this chapter two, you, you actually, um, uh, discuss about victories and sacrifices. You mentioned the following characteristics along with success, like patience, perseverance, preparedness, sacrifice, discipline, consistent commitment and willingness. And without a doubt, you definitely know the secret on how to be successful. And that is why you're very successful. You're a business owner, an entrepreneur, a mentor, a philanthropist, an inspiration to many, and now an author. It's just like, it seems like that you already answered the calling and that you are serving your, your purpose and that you are unstoppable, Kai. Is there anything else that you would like to accomplish <laughs> in life aside from, you know? Well, thank you, Anne, first of all, for your kind words. Appreciate it. It seems that you are really taking this chapter to heart and it's great, yes. I have other four, about four in my bucket list. Uh, I'm 57 years old right now. And at the age of 60, I want to focus on painting and develop my skills in, in drawing and painting. And we'll establish a gallery, gallery shows and events, exhibiting my works, okay? So watch <laughs> out for that. And then I also want to pursue public speaking, become a motivational speaker. So I'm planning to take up professional classes. I want to be a professional in what I do. I know I, I motivate individuals, but I wanted to do it professionally, okay? And then um, guess what? 
I have a, um, a plan of writing one more book, just one more book. The second book will be entitled When Eagles Soar, They Fly Above the Storm. Mm-hmm. And um, I already have that in mind, and it will be much more, two times better than the lion at heart. When eagles soar, they fly above the storm. And um, it will bring you to tears because it's, it's going to be like my very own secret that I will reveal to everyone. Yeah. So um, expand my bridge of hope, my ministry, of course, the charity and ministry, mm-hmm. along with my freedom journey group. We're going to be traveling together and doing some charity if you want to mm-hmm. join me and you will be officially you know, added into that uh, ministry uh, in the next couple of, you know, whatever <laughs> journey that we're going to have, um, especially when COVID is gone. So thank you, Anne. I hope that answers your question. Yes, and there. on to our last person, Risa. Risa Canel, are you there? Oh, yes. Hi, Risa. Good Hi, day. guys. Welcome. Welcome. I have a question for you. Um, what was your favorite part in Chapter 2, Victories um, Over Sacrifices? And, and what empowered you and why? Uh, sacri- uh, victories over sacrifices and um empowered you right the victories yeah. over sacrifices yeah and i'm so honored and a privilege to be a part of this group thank you kai for uh inviting me this uh group and actually after reading your book in chapter two victories over sacrifices my soul was touched and went an hour stary ad. It taught me encouragement and strong mindset that give us hope. So your question, what it, why it is necessary to have success over victories? Because we need to sacrifice first in order to believe in the preparation of spirituality, to believe how to fight obstacles ahead of us, and to believe how to become a better you and to believe the way to succeed. People who sacrifice will gain a lot of success and growth. Those who sacrifice, do not worry because God has a big plan and you will see a light at the end of the tunnel. Have faith, believe, and trust in Him. Wow. And what has empowered me? It empowered me that I can do something, transform me, gives the courage, untouchable, more confident, controlling my life and my strength. Did I answer your question, Kai? Thank you. I commend you and kudos to you. Uh, You spoke from the heart. I know it is something new to you to speak in public but you did it and you did a wonderful job, Risa. I'm so proud of you. Welcome to Line at Heart Freedom Journey. Thank you very much. We love you. We appreciate you. And uh, just a message to you guys. I love you. You're beautiful. Becoming a Line at Heart is not for faint of hearts. One must be willing to take massive risks because it requires sacrifices. It requires persuasiveness, tenacity, commitment, and discipline. Heart is not something you can give to someone. It's something that gets transformed within within yourself. So my advice to you right now, you guys, is um, go. Go as far in life as God allows you. That's my message to you. I love you all. And I want to give the floor to uh, five winners. Five winners. Go ahead. Let's. It's, we're running out of time. Let's do, uh, who's the first question? Uh, you're going to have to write the, 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 the answer to the comments. Type the comments. Uh, type the, the answer to the comments uh, section, okay? Who's the first question for a free book? Okay, go ahead, Beth. Yes. So, Kai's been mentioning his, uh, her unico hijo, the inspiration of her life. Who is she talking about? Her son. What's his name? What's the name of my son? Type it in. The the line at heart is not <laughs> is not. <laughs> you are not included. <laughs> Only for our guests and viewers. <laughs> okay, who's the winner? You guys. Yeah, 
Who's the winner? Lioness, who's the winner? Okay, Miri is the winner. Yeah. Take that down. Guys, help me. Who's the winner? Next question. Come on. Next question for a free book. Line of chart. Go ahead. Go ahead, pull it. What was the compelling reason Kai left the Philippines and moved to the United States? Was it A, money, B, marriage, or C, love? Love. Easy. Okay, who's the winner? I'm writing it down. Miri, the first winner. Who's the second winner? Marge? No, Susang. Susang? 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 Who got who typed in first? Susang. Susang. Okay, Zuzang. are you writing that down, the full name, so that we can uh, contact Susang through Messenger? Yeah, that's Suzanne. Yes. Dan so Bailey. The, get the full name. Okay, no. congratulations, Suzanne. No, Rona, wait, wait, Rona won the first one. I won the second no, one, no. Kai. No, huh? we're not. We're, 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 we're not excluded. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> I have inside information. I cannot win. <laughs> okay, Suzanne, so you're writing that down. Next question, please. Okay. okay, Kai was compelled to work for her family and her only son. What is the, well, what, how old was his, was her son when uh, Kai's first marriage fell apart? Ooh, any guess? Mm. 10, 9, 8, 7. Wow. They're reading your book, Kai. Uh, who, who <laughs> answered first the, the, Bill? Three. There's Mel. Mel? M Mel? No, no. Um, I K K no, no. Oh, Mel. Okay. Carol? It says Mel. Donna, sorry. Mel. 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 The the correct answer is three. Three. Years three. Old when, uh, Mel. Mel. Carol. No winner. Huh? No winner. No, no. no it's Mel. Mel. Mel is the winner. Yeah, but you have to get the, the full name of Mel, okay? Because we need to send get to her address and email address so that we can send the book. Congratulations, Mel. Next question. Ta -da. Okay, who is the husband and the love of her life? Of our author, <laughs> Kai Hayes. Who is the husband? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think March, right? Yeah. Who was the first one who said Greg? Greg is my husband. <laughs> Vicky, who's Vicky Reeves? Okay, Vicky Reeves. Vicky, okay. yes. Hey, congratulations, congratulations, Vicky. Uh, we have four winners already, Mel and Vicky. Who's the last winner? Okay, what's the question? <laughs> Greg. <laughs> okay, who's the last question? We're all have the last question. No, no other questions? Okay, so... <laughs> No other questions. Okay, so we only have four winners today. Take care. Yes, congratulations. So, um, I think our um, line at heart, uh, we are going to present to you a, a lot of uh, inspiration and a lot of uh, next, next, next Saturday again. And uh, we have a lot of great things that we have. We're actually going to act, uh, uh, partner with some of the group that we know and, and some other surprises. So I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful uh, afternoon or evening. Say bye! Until the next bye. 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 Bye.